Hey guys, today we're gonna take a look inside Apologia's Math 2, and I'm gonna let you know everything you need to know if you're considering using this curriculum next year, and if it might be a right fit for you and your family. So let's get started. First up, let's talk about what you actually need to complete this curriculum. It's very simple. You need a teacher book and answer key, all in one book right here, and you need the student book. Now this is all you're going to need as far as material from Apologia. There there are some hands-on manipulatives that you're going to be using for each of the lessons that helps bring the math to life for your kids. But these are mostly found objects you'll find around your home. So at the beginning of each of the units, you're going to find the supplies that'll be needed for that unit. So that gives you a couple of lessons ahead. It's not just lesson to lesson if you'd like to plan. If you like to plan for the entire year, on the last page in the teacher book, you actually find all the supplies that you will need at any given point. Most of these are ones that you are going to have around your home already, but a few items might need to be purchased if you don't already have them. Things like base 10 blocks, 3D shapes, so on and so forth. But what all is covered in this Math 2 curriculum? Well, first, they spend a chunk of time at the beginning reviewing concepts from level one. This is for twofold reason. One, every math covers curriculum and covers material at a different level and a different pace. So because of this, they wanna make sure if your child is just entering Apologia Math at this point, that they have a base knowledge of everything they need before moving into the new material. The second reason is, even if this isn't your child's first time with Apologia Math, there usually is something called a summer slide. So when kids finish curriculum at the end of the school year and take the summer off, they oftentimes need that time for review. It also builds their confidence level. When they come in and they're like, hey, I know this, I can do this. Math isn't hard right from the get-go. So I love the fact that they do this. They start out with review over level one concepts, and then it's going into those level two concepts. You're gonna be covering things like addition and subtraction up to 20, identifying odd and even numbers, adding and subtracting two-digit numbers, including carrying and borrowing and all of that. You're gonna be working on counting up coins and telling time. And then later in the book, you're going to be getting into three digit addition and subtraction. That's just a very brief overview. You can actually see the complete uh, table of contents to understand all of the concepts that they will learn on the Apologia website. I will link a link down below where you guys can go see that table of contents and dig into a little bit more of what's covered there. But let's take a look inside the books and let me show you kind of what you can expect from a typical lesson. First, when I start out teaching this, I open up the teacher's guide. Before you do any lessons at all, definitely take a look at their daily schedule. This breaks it up into four days a week. We are going to do this three days a week. So we'll just kind of adjust. We'll just kind of hit it a little bit different timing, but they really encourage you to take the pacing at your own pace. Take longer, take shorter, whatever you need. There's lots of flexibility built into this program. It's also going to start out by walking you through what the different elements of the program are. So I highly recommend reading this teacher guide introduction. But you'll have units and in each unit, like I said, it'll have that supply list and it'll tell you what the focus of that unit is going to be. Each unit starts with math fact practice. So these are facts that your child's going to practice over the entire unit, not just in the first lesson, over the entire unit. And what I love about it is while it gives you the math facts they need to review, it also gives you fun ways to do it. You can always pull out flashcards and make your own flashcards or buy ones at the store, but they have fun things like having domino facts and pulling out all of the double domino ones and then writing a card, a flashcard with these numbers and they're going to match up the sum for each of those things. So they have fun creative ways to do this for all of the different math facts they're gonna be practicing and um, ways that you can use it with Duplos, things like that. And then you get into your explanation as a teacher. Now what I love about this is they make it so simple. So number one, we're starting out with that review of concepts. We're just talking about number sense and place value. So here's a small section that I'm going to read and this section right here, and that's it. That's, that's lesson one. Lesson two is even shorter. It's just a paragraph right here. These are not things you're gonna read aloud to your child. These are things you're going to read for yourself and for your understanding. They do have an answer key here, which obviously for second grade math is not something you may necessarily need to lean on heavily, but it does allow you to give an idea and understand the concepts if for some reason you need examples or explanation of what they're looking for. The student book is primarily what you're gonna be focusing on each and every day. And the way this works out 
is that you'll have that unit. They'll have usually a little introduction lesson that goes for the entire unit. So here we're looking at number sense and place value. They're talking about different patterns and different ways that we see that throughout things. And then you get into chapter one. It always gives you a summary of what your child is going to learn by the end of this chapter. And then it breaks it up into individual lessons. So a chapter covers multiple lessons within one chapter. And then there are a couple of chapters within a unit, if that makes sense. Each lesson typically is going to start out with you practicing your drill skills, which is what I just showed you before in the teacher's books, where you're gonna do a little hands-on practice with those skills and interacting with the material in a fun way so your child can memorize those math facts, which will help math be so much easier in the future. And then they'll have some kind of fun activity. So like for this one, because we're talking about place value, they want you to set a timer, have your child draw as many stars as they can on a piece of paper, stop the timer, and then you're gonna have your child count up how many stars are on the piece of paper. What they instruct you to do in that teacher's book is that you're going to talk through the different ways they could count that up. They could individually count the stars. They could group it and say, here's four, here's five, and add it together. They could count in lines, but they have all these fun ways for your child to interact with math in a real life example. So I love the fact that they open up with that. And because we open up with fun, it puts them on track for everything else. Then it goes into your practice section. These are usually just very, very short worksheets with very little writing that you have to do, which I really appreciate. So this is like the practice for lesson three. They're gonna be writing there and there, and that's it. So it's very quick and easy lessons, but that's because a lot of the math lesson is also happening within the activity, and then they have additional challenge sections. So if you wanna take it to the next level, if your child can handle a little bit more, they have an additional activity for you to do. So this is gonna work through and build. You'll notice little um, explanations on the side that are gonna help you with vocabulary. So understanding digit, what is a digit, understanding what is place value, that lets you know those are important concepts you want to make sure your child thoroughly understands. And so they're gonna continue this format, reviewing those reviewing those uh, math facts, doing their game slash activity, and then doing their practice sheet for the day. Having this repetition really makes it a great spiral approach. They can introduce new concepts, but you're still constantly practicing the ones that you have in the past. You'll notice there's a lot of great visuals throughout the program, which I really, really, really appreciate. And they even have fun activities like coloring sheets involved or things that your child will build and explore. That is the end of chapter one after nine lessons here for this one. And then it goes into chapter two. We're still in unit one, so keep that in mind. But at the end of the unit, there's something extra special. At the end of each unit, they have a different project or review game or activity for you to do. So for here, you're gonna do a place value Yahtzee unit unit review. It's going to give you instructions on how to do this and it's even going to tell you where to go back if your child is still struggling with this concept before jumping into unit two. I think it's so fun that at the end of each unit there are those extra activities and like while the first unit was working on a game, the second unit is actually doing a two-digit addition and subtraction poster that you're going to create. So there's a wide variety of skills. If they're hands-on or maybe they're creative, there's something for everybody in here. So they're going to be able to do this activity before going into unit three where they're gonna be talking about time and money. We started using Apologia Math mid-year this past year. So we have done parts of level one and then we'll be moving into level two this fall and we're really excited about it. Some of the things I love about it is the hands-on aspect for your kids who need a lot of review, for your kids who learn best through play and through games. This is where it's at. This is a fantastic resource for your kids. I love the fact that it is so highly um, desired that it would be a fun thing. You can see there's lots of color. There's pictures of real kids in the book. There is um, a lot of just exciting engagement to it. And the desire behind that is a lot of times math books, when you come to them, they're very boring. They're very dry. They're very straightforward. And it can be something that can make math very hard to kind of mentally get over that hump. They can very easily buy into that idea that math is not fun. But when they get to come into it and see that it's a way that they could understand their God better and understand the world and the order that 
he created, it becomes an exciting thing and it becomes an opportunity to infuse wonder into our kids' school day. The third thing that I really love is the fact that everything is biblically based. If you want a math curriculum that is completely neutral, that doesn't talk about God at all, this is not the curriculum for you. This one definitely recognizes and acknowledges God and his part in all of this. And I love the fact that it ties in and helps my kids understand why math matters in the relationship with God. I like the fact that it's kind of the perfect blend of mastery versus spiral. So mastery is the idea that a concept is introduced to your child and they work on it until it is completely mastered. Spiral is that idea that things are constantly being reviewed while you're introducing new subjects. And I feel like this is a great blend of both. It's mastery in the sense that each unit is focusing on specific things. So when we're talking about money and time, that's really what we're focusing on predominantly, but there is still those opportunities for review there. There's still a heavy emphasis on memorizing math facts and other concepts, and you're going to be utilizing those skills to complete those projects. So I really love that blend there. So is this math a good fit for you and your family? Well, if you're looking for something that is biblically based, that has short, repetitive lessons that your child can do, ones that offer opportunity for flexibility. So if you need to stay in a concept longer, you can just play those review games over and over again. You can vary the games from the different lessons that are within that unit to make sure that they fully master it before moving on to the next unit. And you like something that's open and go for you as a teacher, then this might be a good math curriculum for you. Let me know what questions you have about Apology of Math down in the comments below and be sure to check out their placement test because if you are unsure where your child might be placed, that is gonna be a really helpful tool that's gonna help you put them in the perfect spot.